Now that you understand what linear equations are, let's use that idea to now solve a business problem and also solve a past ACCA exam question. This question comes from the PM exam, but it's also applicable to MA. So you could see a similar question in MA or PM. Let's take it from the top and we have a table of data. And this data shows a number of clients who attend a particular accountancy practice over the recent weeks and then the total cost. So we've got number of clients and total cost. Does that look like something we, we just uh, covered? Well, yes, it does. I've got an independent variable, the number of clients, that's the X, and then I've got a dependent variable, a total cost, that's a Y. And what do we need to, to help this business do? Well, we're gonna use the high-low method using with the above information, and which of the following equations could be used to forecast the total cost from the number of clients expected to attend, where X is the number of clients. So with this information, we would like to be able to predict a total cost based on the number of clients that we expect. And it'll look like this. That X is the number of clients, and that Y is the total cost. And let's help this company do this, but first of all, if we look at the answers here, could we eliminate one? Why don't you pause the video for a second and let's just see if we could eliminate one of the answers. D goes out because it's not in the right form. We said that Y is equal to A plus B times X. Look at that. All of these are, are feasible because this would be the A and that would be the B X right there. So A, B, and C are feasible solutions. Let's now solve this problem using this high-low method. Well, we have some data here. Let's go back to the data. What we're going to do is make an assumption. I'm going to pick out the high number of clients, which I see is 460. So let's just put this here. Let's imagine this is 460, not to scale. That would be a high. And then we have a low. Let's say that's 400. So we've chosen the high and the low number of clients, and then we will get a corresponding total cost. So we're going to come up here, and we get a corresponding total cost. I'll do that in red. So then we have the 40k over here, and here we have the 36.9. You might be wondering, oh look, this one actually has a lower cost. Maybe we should use that one, but no. We are going to ignore any of the data that's in between the high and the low. It's not perfect correlation, but we're gonna assume that. So we're gonna ignore this data in the middle and now just assume that we have a straight line equation. First step, let's solve for the X or the variable cost. So we've got to get one of these. And that's going to be the change in the activity is corresponding to the change in the total cost. We're going to assume that that's a perfect um, relationship. And therefore, all I have to do is this. The change in the cost 
over the change in the number of units is going to give me the gradient or the variable cost, the x. And we have the change in units, that's 60, right? 460 minus 400. And then we can do the 40,000 minus the 36880. And I've got a 3120. So when the clients increase 60, we have a total cost increase of 3120. So now we can get a variable cost per unit of 52. And right away, we can see that the answer is B without doing any more work. Why don't we take a moment though and get the 16080 just to be complete. So we have solved for the X and we can use either one of these equations, the high one or the low one. And I'm liking the high one because it has the, the round total cost there. So we can use our knowledge of linear equations and we know that y is equal to a plus bx. Also, we can express that total cost is equal to fixed cost plus variable cost times x. And look at that. We know the, four, the total cost is 40,000 equals the fixed cost, which is the A, which is the unknown, plus the variable cost we just calculated, times the activity at this level, and that's 460. So, continuing on, $40,000 equals the fixed cost plus 23,920. So we can see that that fixed cost is equal to $16,080. And there it is, answer is B. Just to recap what we've done, we now know that the total cost for this company is equal to the 16 080, oh, those are the fixed costs, the overhead, the rent, to the salaries, plus the variable cost of $52 multiplied by the number of clients. So that's how linear equations work in a past management accounting type of exam when we use the linear equations to help us calculate the total cost for a business.